Hello everybody, so wonderful to see you all. Guys, I am having literally the cloudiest, gloomiest travel day down here in South Australia. I don't know if you can really tell out there, but it is just, the weather is just not it today, all right? So instead of doing a travel video, I thought I would address this question right here and talk to you guys a little bit about car camping. Now, to be completely honest, I really should have made this video already. I have been traveling for over a year and probably set up my car two years or so ago and literally just never got around to it so i know you guys are super curious so in this video i will be talking about specifically my car setup doing a bit of a walkthrough with you guys because i know if you're curious of doing it yourself you like to see what other people's look like and i really wish when i was setting mine up i would have had someone else's little hatchback to look at for reference uh, but i also want to show you guys some like little extras and stuff that i've thrown in that i feel like makes a big difference to my daily life stuff that i love like that and then as well do a few safety tips and a few travel tips that i've learned for my last year or two basically traveling around and car camping also just quickly as well before we begin this video i do want to make a quick little point to say this is not going to be for everyone there are so many out there of you who want to travel and have like a four-wheel drive or a big caravan set up or a van or anything else like i am so happy for you guys to do that but this is for the people who are curious about a smaller setup because i just want people to know that it is like totally doable as well and there is nothing wrong with doing that because i feel like people don't realize as well how accessible australia is and how much you can do on a budget or with limited space so first thing first this is my car it's a hyundai i30 so obviously a two-wheel drive and a lot smaller than most of your conventional travel vehicles but not to worry i'm going to show you just how much space you really do have to work with in something this small a van or four-wheel drive setup would definitely be amazing but this car has gotten me to some truly incredible places already just like this from literally remote outback travel all the way to the snow so i do just want to say that you don't necessarily need a different or bigger vehicle if you are looking to start traveling and car camping as for why i personally chose to set up a smaller vehicle rather than getting something else well, short answer is it's basically just what I had, but long answer is that I was unfortunately in a car accident where a truck ran up the back of me and wrote off my first car. I needed a car relatively quickly to be getting to things like work and sport, so I brought the i30 second hand as my second car. It wasn't too long afterwards that I really decided I wanted to travel more and it just seemed like the right thing instead of going out and buying a new vehicle again so quickly. Luckily for me, my dad is an incredible handyman and helped me build it out, which brings me to my actual car setup. So this is what the back of my car looks like during the day, and yes, I know it needs a good clean, I am still travelling and it has seen a fair few dirt roads lately. Anyway, as you can see, the back seats are totally pulled out, so it gives me a lot of storage room, as well as still having the two front seats free. I also have a fridge and portable camping gas cooker for cooking that sits down the side in this timber box here. The fridge itself I think is a 22 litre, it's a brass monkey car fridge anyway, absolutely love it. The only minor issue I have with it if you're thinking of getting the same is it's just slightly too shallow to fit a milk bottle standing upright, but aside from that it's got plenty of room for at least one or two people and fits great for the space. As for the gas cooker, mine's an older model, but you can grab these fairly cheap at any Bunnings or camping store. As for storage, I've seen most people camping use plastic tubs, but I'm not particularly fond of the idea, so I'll just give you a quick look at my setup. My dad was absolutely amazing in designing these timber boxes with me, and I actually think they're pretty clever because each of them has a lid that doubles as the bed platform. They're cut specifically to fit my car and really just help me keep things organized because honestly, a messy life on the road is a completely chaotic one. Aside from my fridge and cooker, I do have a kitchen box as well. And once again, this is at the back just because it makes it super easy for me to pull up and grab everything out of an afternoon when I wanna cook some dinner or I just wanna set up by a picnic table. I 
I do also try to carry at least 15 litres of drinking water with me to have for cooking, cleaning and obviously drinking. I did try like the 10 litre bottles and bigger things but again working with a smaller space I find these 5 litre jerry cans the easiest way to do it. I think they were just from Bunnings but again you can probably pick them up from a camping store or any hardware shop. I'll just quickly show you this picture as well. This is my storage without the mattress on top, so you can get a better idea of what the boxes look like underneath. And as you can see, they've got their lids on them forming that platform. They do also all separately unscrew, so I can take them out and apart if I needed to. For instance, if I wanted to clean my car or if I'm at home, I like to take them out and put my dogs in the back. So that's just really helpful as well. So next question is, how do I actually sleep? Great question and the day setup is awesome but it's just too short with the i30 size to be sleeping in the back like most other car campers. Now most setups I have seen do just sleep behind the front seats but I couldn't advise more and I know this is personal but if there's not really enough space you're not going to be comfortable and you're just not going to enjoy the experience so do make sure there's actually enough space for you. So with that said, this is my night setup. The front passenger seat does fold down, creating a full length bed, which is supported by the seat and storage box. More than enough room and super cozy. It quite literally takes me like two minutes to set up. So it's just as easy as any other camper and has plenty of room. At the moment, coming into winter and being down in the colder climate, I personally like to add an extra blanket. This one's a puffer blanket and I absolutely love it, so I'll link it below if you are interested. I just find it keeps me so much warmer. Of course, in summer, a portable camping fan is an absolute essential as well. So it really just does depend what climate you're in and where you're thinking of going. In regards to privacy and car camping, I use a sun visor and curtains, but I've seen so many people just sleep without anything covering their windows. And I know that's a personal choice, but please do be safe out there. I'd highly recommend tinting your windows at least and anything else that stops people directly looking in while you're resting. I know you can get some great foil window coverings or curtains or blinds or whatever works for you, but just make sure you do have a little bit of privacy on the road. Next thing I want to talk about is power. This mightn't be necessary for you if you're just doing weekend camping trips, but full-time traveling, it's definitely been a must for me. On my car, I have a solar panel mounted to the roof racks and then a secondary battery inside the car, which also charges off the car when it's running. Even with such a common car, I've had people message me saying that they recognized it and saw me just from things as simple as the panel, which is great. I love hearing from you guys and running into you out and about, but do be aware anything you change obviously makes your vehicle just a little bit more recognizable. Once again, my dad was absolutely amazing to set this up for me, but if you're thinking of doing the power and wiring yourself, just do be super careful or get someone who knows what they're doing if you, understandably like me, are just not quite sure. So obviously that allows me to run my fridge. I also have a power point and a touch light, which helps me avoid draining the car's battery when I want to use it, say of a night to jump on my laptop and charge that, or just constantly have my fridge running. The rest of the space is taken up by a few extras, which I personally choose to bring. At the moment, I'm traveling with a pack, tent, mat, etc., all my hiking gear for hikes, which I just personally like to do, but they do take up a bit of extra space, but it does go to show as well, but you really can fit a fair bit in if you've got your other hobbies, definitely bring that stuff along on the road with you. I also always have a camp chair, picnic mat and hammock as my extra essentials, which I advise you don't go without. The hammock I'm using is actually by the same company as the puffer blanket I mentioned before and I've just found them to be amazing as compact, lightweight, extra camping essentials to have and make yourself just more comfortable and feel at home while you're on the road. Just one more extra I'd recommend as well would be a hanging light. Anything rechargeable with a hook is great. This one in particular also has a mini mozzie zapper. I don't find the zapper overly effective, unfortunately, but a light will always be super helpful when camping and you never know, you might find it more effective for you. Then finally, if you're still with me, here are a few camping and car safety tips that I have learnt along the way. 
Firstly, if you're traveling Australia or New Zealand, make sure you get the Wiki Camps app. I know you've probably already heard of this already, but if you're just getting into it, you mightn't have, and I'd really recommend it for you. I think it does cost about seven or eight dollars, but it's how I find almost all of my free or paid campsites and caravan parks along the way, and also use it to check the safety and location reviews by other travelers. If you don't particularly like the setup of that app, you could also try CamperMate. I did use it for a while, it's not bad. I personally just don't find it as complete and updated as the listings on Wikicamps. Number two, if you're spending lots of time in your vehicle driving around and probably heading out of town to explore, make sure you get yourself covered by some sort of roadside assist. It's just a little extra, but it could definitely help even with simple things like locking yourself out of your car. Also, it wouldn't hurt to carry a can of tyre sealant just in case you do get a flat. Obviously, you could just change it then and there, but from my personal experience, when I was travelling in the outback, I did get a flat and it was really reassuring that I could just pump it up with this and then keep my spare just in case because I still had hundreds of kilometres with no service to go before I could get back into town and get it replaced. And finally, of course, depending on where you're going, but if you're doing a bigger trip, I'd 100% recommend buying a paper map. It's just a personal thing I do, but I find it really helps me planning out longer trips on the road. And of course, if you're out of service, it's nice to know where you're going. Alrighty, so that was my complete car tour for this video. I hope it did sort of answer a few of those questions you might have had around car traveling and as well just give you like a few ideas and, and basic inspiration to get yourself started on your own little mini car camper if that's something you are interested in doing. Obviously guys, I do love this lifestyle. I'm very happy to share it with you all and I hope it does help. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that regarding solo travel or car camping or Aussie travel, any of those areas that you think I might be able to help you with, feel free absolutely to drop them in the comments or send me a DM and I will try and get back to you basically as soon as I can with those um, answers there, see if I can give you some pointers. But for now guys, I am headed off hopefully to enjoy my cloudy afternoon. I will be back with some regular travel content as usual soon I hope, so hopefully I will see you all then.